just count on Paul. God made him do it. Folks, I think we're ready to call to um, to call ourselves to order. Um, the Gus Selig, who is usually, uh, who is currently actually serving as our town moderator, is not available to join us at the. Uh, so, unfortunately, so um, we need somebody else to moderate. The select board has decided we we we, we are not going to moderate this discussion um, because it's you know sort of somewhat independent of select board. So I am actually I'm going to go ahead if it's okay and make a motion that. Uh, Barbara McAndrew moderate serving in Gus, Gus's place since he can't be here. I'll second that. Denise is seconding. Any other discussion or comments? Any other nominees? Um, I guess all in favor, please say aye. 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 And, okay. and, and if you could, I'm circulating the sign in sheet so we have it for the record. If you could all sign, sign in, you sit there. And I'm going to sit here to take notes. That's okay. Well, you should sit here, Barbara. Yeah, we move this. Yeah, sit in the middle. Just we'll put a, uh, another seat. Probably over there. I'm just. Okay, folks, so we're going to um, do this as expeditiously as possible. The, um, the Curtis Pond Association has a, a few things to share with you and um, in, a, in a short order, five to, five to ten minutes, I understand. And then um, we'll open the floor to questions. And um, if we can hold questions until they're finished, that would be the best um, approach, I think. You might, I think for the record, you should read in the article. Now, for now? Okay, I can do that. Put the glasses on. So this is Article 20 regarding um, the uh, Curtis Pond. Uh, the article reads, shall general obligation bonds of the town of Callis in an amount not to exceed $450,000 subject to reduction from available state or federal funds or other financial assistance be issued for the purpose of renovation of the Curtis Pond Dam to state dam safety standards, the estimated total cost of which is $700,000. So that is Article 20 put forward to the town by um, Australian ballot. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Colleen and Jamie. I'm going to start with a really brief introduction of Curtis Pond Association and the history of people talking about fixing the dam. I'm the president of Curtis Pond Association, and we formed that. Uh, Heidi Thompson and I were very informally, you know, in meetings that, you know, seven, uh, seven, eight years ago, we really should have an organization. We got together 50 postcards, sent them out, and we started the organization with some summer meetings. It was good. We had good attendance. I think one of the highest meetings was like uh, approaching 50 people. And uh, all we talked about was lilies. <laughs> That's all we talked about. And then Heidi and I, again, a couple years later, were like, well, we won't have this lily problem at all if the dam goes. <laughs> so maybe we should talk about the dam. So we started the Curtis Pond uh, Exploratory Group, uh, I think it was three years ago. It was right, it was the summer of the pandemic. In fact, our first meeting was at John Rosen. Which John? Why isn't he up here with us? He's supposed to be up here. <laughs> um, at John's house, and we had it outside because it was the pandemic. And we've met uh, a lot since then. And the explore. Uh, the, so first, first of all, a lot of people have been doing stuff about this since about 2000. And uh, we have a lot of that background. A lot of it's on our website, including letters to the editor to uh, at Times Argus. They're really interesting. Um, but so a little bit about the CPA. I'm president. Jamie and I are sort of co-presidents. President, vice president. Uh, uh, Mark Sweeney is secretary. Mark Mahalley is on the executive board. 
uh, Noreen Bryant, uh, um, Jens the Goose is uh, secretary, and uh, Ginger. I thought, Mar everybody? I thought Marge was treasurer. Marge is treasurer. Didn't I say that? Said I said secretary. Marge is treasurer. She said uh, she's secretary. So we're the principals that are signing things and stuff like that with the select board. With the exploratory group, uh, it's been mainly uh, myself and, and John and, and Rini and Mark and Marge. Mark and Marge were pretty big principals. Mark was the legal mind that got a lot worked out with ownership and all. Um, Marge did a lot of work with numbers about, uh, well, we'll get into that later. And uh, Jamie joined in, has been really heading fundraiser, but she does a tremendous amount on the website. The website is, it's, I mean, there's more information than you ever would want. If you have further questions tonight, you can call any of us, but the website has a lot. And so, uh, I mean, one might say we've been talking about this since 2000, nothing's happened, so why do we need to do it now? A good question, but the lean, <laughs> the degree of lean has changed dramatically, and the state is majorly concerned, and they are taking dams, uh, they're lowering, lowering water without like giving like a week's notice, <coughs> going in and saying, okay, we're taking it down four feet. So without a big weather event, that could happen anytime. And it is happening across the state. So anyways, that's the background about how we got here and how we started our thing. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jamie. Yeah, so about three years ago, we were having conversations with the uh, state dam safety. And that's when we learned that uh, if, if the dam failed, or if the dam got in poor enough condition that the state deemed it necessary to lower the water level, they would reclassify the pond as a wetland and no longer issue a permit to replace the dam. So they came to us and said, just so you know, it's been really bad for 20 years. We watch it closely. If it fails, you probably won't ever have a Curtis Pond as you know it today again. And so that's really what kicked us in the gear. Um, and so the first thing we did was look at all the previous efforts. A ton of community members, a lot of people here have been involved at different stages over the last 20, 25 years. And so we talked to a lot of those people who had been involved and said, what was the roadblock? What stopped the project when you were working on it? <coughs> and we sort of made a list of all those things. And then we got together and talked to a lot of people and said, OK, those are the first things to solve. Um, and one of the big ones was ownership. Um, and sort of the state was saying, we can't issue a permit except to the owner. And there isn't an owner, so there's no, nobody can get a permit. So we worked with a bunch of lawyers, we talked to the town attorney, the select board, um, and we came up with a plan to have the town take ownership after it's fixed. Um, we looked into the idea of the Curtis Pond Association taking ownership, uh, but it's really only reasonably insurable if it's municipal owned. Um, so we weren't able to go that route and we went with the town route. Um, in talking to dam engineers, uh, we looked at two different potential designs. The one we went with was the, it'll be a concrete dam built behind the current existing dam. So what they'll do is they'll build, a, they'll put in an inflatable coffer dam across the point, sort of from the, roughly from the point behind the Heise's house to somewhere near the Blue Barn dock. And so that big inflatable dam will hold back the water of the whole pond. They'll drain the cove, excavate out the muck, and pour concrete footing into the bedrock just behind the existing stone dam. And this route allows us to keep and tie in the existing dam so that from the road, it will still look about the same as it does now. It'll have a concrete spillway that lines up with the existing spillway. So we'll still have the, you know, the waterfall coming over the stone wall uh, and have that great look. 
We did look into another design that involved basically piling granite blocks uh, on the downstream side of the dam, and it would have cost about half as much, but we would have lost the historic look of it, and we might not have gotten the permit, because part of the permitting process goes through historic preservation. And it would have required annual upkeep. Um, and so the annual expense of maintaining that type of a dam, uh, we felt like would be too onerous for the long run. Um, so there were a lot of reasons we went with this, this stronger, longer lasting, better looking uh, concrete dam. So back in about a year ago, I think last April is when we started our fundraising. Um, we we received a price tag five six 2013 so now almost ten years ago it was going to be a three hundred and fifty three hundred and sixty thousand dollar project um, and with updated numbers it's it's about double that it's about seven hundred thousand um, so we set some ambitious fundraising goals uh, we started looking at grants um, and in the last year we we are at about, two, we've raised about $232,000 um, from private donors, largely people who live on or near the pond and or use the pond regularly. Um, we've done a ton of events and outreach, and door knocking and phone calls and fundraising letters. Um, it's, been a, it's been a really fun experience in a lot of ways because we've talked to so many people heard so many stories of, you know, people who learned to swim there many, many years ago, generations of use. Um, so it's been a really great community building project. And it's exciting. And raising that much money really shows um, the, the level of community support. So the, the general funding formula we're looking at is 250000 in donations, 100000 that the select board um, approved pending passage of the bond, which is uh, federal ARPA funds, um, and then we expect the actual bond amount uh, to be in the ballpark of 350000 although we have several grant applications in the works, so that, that number may continue to decrease as we get closer to construction. Um, I think that's most of what I was going to hit. Do you want either of you want to add anything before we show the I'll video? I'll just mention it's 620, so we'll so make we sure should to give go. people yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Should we play the video? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We just have this three minute video that a um, Art Bell, Art Bell, friend of, well, big in video, but a friend of Don Heise's who loves Curtis Pond and loves pond hockey on the pond. Loves ice skating. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Ice 
Swiss fishermen, cross country skiers, bunches of skaters, and even a girl over using frozen kitty litter containers. Every spring, as soon as the ice melts, the canoeists, paddleboards, campfires, and crickets return. Some people come just to hear the loons at dusk. The last time I tried to count, a few thousand come to Curtis Pond every year. This is the place where so many of us and our children really learn to play. The first place you ever take your girlfriend. This place builds confidence in and around the water. But what it really builds are good neighbors and good citizens. If America ever wanted to paint a picture of what an ideal community should be, Curtis Pond would be it. Like the one house in the neighborhood where everybody goes. <laughs> Almost a hundred years ago, some folks had the wisdom to build a dam here. For water power to cut the logs and grind the grains. Now the dam is in trouble. Our responsibility to this community is to leave it the way we found it. For our children today and for their children tomorrow. It's not all of us to keep it going. Today, and this was news to all of us who love this place, if the dam river fails, that's it. It likely can never be rebuilt. We need to repair it now so all our children can raise their children here <coughs> on this water in this community. The reality is, without all of us, Curtis Pond will revert to a large swamp and a few small ponds. The end of moonlight walks along the shore. The end of campfires, s'mores, and wet, occasionally cold, but usually giggling kids of all ages. Okay. Yeah, so you ready? Okay. Um, all right, so um, this is an opportunity to ask questions to the board. Um, and uh, and I'll just remind folks that this is not an opportunity to make changes to the to the article, right? That this is um, an article that's being voted on by Australian ballot. So, with that, I will do my best to answer questions in the order I see them. Could I ask one thing? Sure. Even if I know you, could you state your name so I can have it for the record? Great. Any questions or comments, folks, want to make? Matt. Matt Gardner Morris. Uh, I noticed they talked about water power and uh, there is a pen stock there. Did we look into generating power off from the dam? Or, you know, the other thing is that you're talking about the silt behind the dam. That, of course, is going to build up again over the years. Is there, do we have to maintain it by removing that silt? Or? The, the, so we did look into hydropower. We had a bunch of different conversations with, with folks, and it was deemed that there's not enough uh, water flow for it to be economically feasible. Um, in, in terms of the silt, it's it's the design is built to withstand that. So it'll you know it'll fill in as it has filled in currently. But engineering wise, they don't foresee that being an issue, and it won't require digging it out regularly. They, it just needs to be dug out now to get the footing pinned to the bedrock. Really? Where's the silt going? That's a good question. I'll um, take it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the question of the silt. <laughs> um, no, no, I'll take the silt. <laughs> yeah, the, rock. the contractor will be responsible for hauling it away, and I'm, I, I don't know the specific plan for that. I know that Steve Sweeney took all of, <laughs> all of it from the fishing access. Which was a lot, like seven or eight big uh, yeah. truckfuls that came out, and he leveled out a whole bunch of stuff. But when they put the uh, dock in at the, he took all that. Yeah. I think there may be landowners that would be willing to take it. It's, no, that's a good yeah. point. Pre precedent for that. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice I, silt. <laughs> I don't think it'll be an issue. 
Probably finding a place. Do a little fundraising off that. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the bucket. Nice. Right. right. <laughs> Sell the silk. Yeah. Yeah. Pop. Um, I'm going to stand up because I don't want to talk to everybody. I, I may be stuck at the garden party here, um, but you, some of you probably read my post on Front Porch Forum. But I guess, is there, is there anybody here who thinks the dam shouldn't be fixed? I mean, come on, look at that video and tell me no, the dam shouldn't be fixed. Right. Is there anybody here that thinks the dam shouldn't be fixed soon? And I'll leave soon a little bit squishy, but I mean soon, not the 20 years we've been waiting. So anybody thinks that that's not nah, no big deal? I think so. Yeah, well, that, I, think, I don't think we should keep pushing it down, though. No, no, no. no. Uh, right. right. I agree. Decision. Soon, soon is some. Currently, I'm, I'm not defining, but um, they have, but I have. Given the fact that the town has the swim area and the island, is there anybody who thinks the town shouldn't have any financial interest in it? it shouldn't pump it up? Does the town own this one area? Or does it belong to the Vermont Land Trust? It belongs to the town, as does the island. I thought that it belonged to the land trust. It reverted to the land trust if we ever oh. didn't have swim lessons there. We, the town the, owns it. The town probably owns it. The land trust owns the development rights. Usually. Well, I, well, I wasn't cool. trying to. But, <laughs> Why don't we say, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a fair question. Okay. But let's say, just bear with me and assume that that's the case. And keep because, going. because I think I think the point is still the same. Does anybody think the town shouldn't pony up any money? No. All right. So there's an awful lot of common ground right there. I, I am with you on all those three questions. The Curtis Pond is the soul of Maple Corner. And if, that, if you didn't believe it before, the video was like, that's pretty impressive. Nice work, um, whoever the fellow was. You got to swim, you got to skate. I look at the pictures of Mardi Gras, and come on, it's, it's amazing. Um, and yes, it attracts people beyond the Curtis Pond and the Corner area. But you've got to consider that it is still somewhat neighborhood-centric, and there are other neighborhoods, in, just in Calais alone, that have similar, either have or have had similar events. Um, Memorial Hall in North Calais is, is their effort, I think, at kind of bringing, bringing, the town, bringing that part of town together. And they've done an incredible job. I don't know who's looked at it lately, but I, we picked in the windows the other day. And I'm ready to write another check because it's just they've just done an extraordinary job. It was a million dollar project. The town has fifty thousand dollars in East Calvin store, two point two million. The town has zero dollars in it. Without that store, that village is gonna just crumble. And I'm really glad they're fixing that. No, no town, no no public dollars. There's a pass through, one pass through grant. Well, there's public dollars. Pass through grant. There's no town money in it, is what I was told. No, there's no town federal dollars. Oh, no, there's no there's town federal money. state. No yeah. taxpayer right. dollars. There's no, no taxpayer. Town taxpayer dollars in it. Right. Town. Somebody, Olivia, just pointed out in a uh, post the other day the island was purchased through the efforts of people in this room. $22,000 privately raised, $5,000 of town money. It's maybe not quite on point, East Calais Fire District. Without that fire district, those people don't have water. $250,000 bond they voted for. 54 people are going to pay off that bond. No town money, no public money. The town hall that we're sitting in, it's, we own this. And we spent $530,000 fixing it. Only $200,000 of it came from taxpayer dollars. The people who were interested in having this happen all went out and raised the rest of the money. So. The dam, even using your conservative, the most conservative figures, 64% of the 700,000 is coming from public dollars. Paul, your voice keeps going down. Okay, I'll read. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't like being discovered in the garden part, but I think, I think this stuff needs to be pointed out. 64% um, of the cost is, is being borne by everybody in town. Yes, everybody in town has an interest. 
I haven't been on Curtis, I used to live in Kent's Corner. I haven't been on Curtis Pond in an awful lot of years. Do I still think it's important? Of course I do. But it's a big chunk of the nut for a, for a neighbor, primarily neighborhood-centric asset. So um, people have compared fixing it with roads and schools. It seemed like a fair comparison, except that the town is statutorily obligated to fix the roads and keep schools going. This is like, well, what's, where, where did we, yes, we own land on it. So yes, some money should be ponied up to it. But I just think the 64% is too heavy. As far as the soon, how soon should it be fixed, I, don't, I really don't believe that another year, another more fundraising and more outreach would, is going to get that damn shit, particularly with the amount of effort that's being done now. I think, I think it would be fine. My other questions are, what other dams or other assets in town? I'm a little apprehensive about the town owning it. I wish the Curtis Pond Association would take ownership of it. I'm not convinced the town has as easy a time as you think getting insurance. Last I heard, they can get a million dollars. Well, that might take care of the make a corner store, the thing it looked a little. I just think there's an awful lot of unanswered questions. I could stop there, and I, uh, the, the argument that if, if the dam, if the water, if nobody wants the water to disappear. I don't believe the water's going to disappear. I think the dam's going to get fixed. I just wish you'd push it off and do a little more outreach. Dirk kind of misquoted me in his po post. He said I wanted to see more, more community involvement. I said what I really said was I wanted to see more community financial involvement. I, I know you guys have been working your asses off to get this thing done. And I don't want to take away from that at all. I would just like to see it push back one year, raise some more money, apply for some more grants, and don't expect the rest of the town to prop up. Uh, well, the arguments have been your property values will go down. It's not really, it's, it's not my job, it's not our job to make sure that Stan and Elaine's barn doesn't fall down. Because it's beautiful, and yes, their property values would, would decrease if it went down, and we'd all suffer. But you, you, it's, not, it's not the town line responsibility that 64% of this suggests. So my, my urging is to sharpen your pencils and come back next year. OK. Other comments and questions? Yes, yes. Steve Case. Uh, what contractors have weighed in on um, building this, proposing a cost? I've only heard Dubois and Kane mention, and then stating a figure. Are they the only show in town for this project? No, actually, they're, they're not the ones that have estimated the cost. It was um, Larry Hebert out of Williamstown. Uh, I saw three, we saw three uh, estimates. Two of which said, oh, his sounds pretty good. In other words, they may be interested in putting in a formal bid, but they didn't want to necessarily sharpen their pencils and do all the work. Larry, Larry's from Williamstown. A lot of people know him. Uh, he's real uh, familiar with town politics because he's been on the select board a great part of his life as head and everything else in Williamstown. But he's been out twice uh, uh, here. And we talk to him once a month to say, hey, might you still be available? Might you still be interested? And we do keep hearing uh, the cost of cement, concrete, whatever you say, is just skyrocketing and is going to continue to. But it's mostly from him. And he did Nichols Pond. He did a huge, fairly huge pond down in Fairly that holds back about, what did he say? Four times the amount of water. It's much, much, much bigger. Three towns, three town municipality, and uh, much bigger deal of a of a job. And uh, we were pretty impressed with him. He seems to be he's been around the block, has done a lot of damn work in his life. And we talked about the stones downstream and all that stuff. So most of the numbers come from him. And and the other two people were like, yeah, that sounds about right. And climbing. Uh, rather quickly. You mentioned in the uh, on your website that you put it out for for bid uh, if the funding comes through. 
Do you know who you send those bids out to or request from? Um, uh, uh, Boy and King will come up with a list of yeah. the engineer yeah. on the project. They have a list of contractors that are qualified to construct dams in Vermont, and they would let the request for bids out and then see who shows up. And they've already t told us they have availability for that. The main reason we went with them this time and didn't go out to bid was they did a complete application in 2013 that is on our website. Uh, and so it was ready to be submitted, basically. Uh, obviously, things change between 2013 and now, 10 years, a lot of things. Like, we have seven, eight, nine permits now that we have to get. Uh, but they, they already, I mean, we, had, we were in close communication with the, uh, Sean Patnod, who was the engineer who did that application. He's now head of snowmaking at Sugarbush. But we've had a lot of communication with him and he assured us that in his opinion, he didn't leave a disgruntled employee or anything like that, but he assured us that uh, he thought the most efficient thing financially and time-wise was to stick with them uh, because his application was ready to be submitted. Uh, so that's why we stuck with them. And, and on a related note, one of the reasons to push ahead and try and get this done as quickly as possible is as we've seen over the last couple of years, costs of construction and materials and everything it is growing rapidly. And so there's this fear, right? We say, OK, yeah, great. Let's do it next year instead and raise money for another year. Well, you raise another $200,000, and then it's a year later, and the project costs $190,000 more. We're kind of in the same place in terms of uh, funding. so. It's, there's, that's just another tack on why getting it done sooner is better than later. Well, unless you hope for a recession when prices go down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry, you're in the back. Uh, Sam Aaron Powell. Um, I've got a, a two-parter. Um, first, Paul was just mentioning looking for grants in the next year. Are there other grants out there that are possibly available to help defray the cost? that so, you guys have seen in your research? Yeah, so there are, there's one federal grant that we've put quite a bit of time and energy into, and it's in the process. And if we were selected, it would <coughs> likely pay 50% of the cost of the project. Um, but it would be four to five plus years before we know the outcome of that grant. Okay, so um, it would be a repayment. And so that's sort of like, a, no, we wouldn't, right, we wouldn't be able to do it till, if we were relying on that for our funding. So that's in the works. It's a, you know, safety measure. The other problem with that grant is they would likely require us to construct the dam significantly higher, so it wouldn't um, maintain the historic preservation as much. And then there are, two or three other smaller grants that we have in the works um, that, that may come through this summer. And, and we're that, working with a grant writer uh, that you worked with, Denise, at the East Warrens. I mean, uh, what's her name? Uh, Liz. Liz. Uh, and, and looking, because we put many, many queries out. Uh, of, does anyone in our midst in the town have, you know, grant writing experience, but not just grant writing, grant finding. Right, if anybody And can that's do it. what, and Liz is. If anybody can do it, Liz. Yeah, can. so we are uh, probably, let's, let's just say that uh, if the bond fails and we go back to the drawing boards, we will probably take part of the money that we have fundraised to, she's a professional, mm -hmm. to pay her mm -hmm. to look for more grants. But we have explored many, many grant possibilities. And most of the big ones are on the four to six year pipeline. Okay. Um, one second quick follow up question. You mentioned that the, the land trust holds the development rights for the swim area. I would imagine that they probably have an easement uh, requirement that that area be kept open for recreation. Um, has anybody looked into talking to them about helping with fundraising? I know they do sometimes assist folks around the state with fundraising projects, usually around easements, but 
that may be something that they might be willing to be involved you might have in an if they have a, a vested interest. Reed, did you have a response well, to I, that? I, uh, I'm a little mystified at the mention of the land trust because I had never heard that they were involved. I, didn't I thought I think the um, the documents I've seen show the the Calus Conservation Association Inc. Um, bought the property for seventy five hundred dollars, tore down the buildings, and then they held it for a while and then <coughs> gave it to the I don't know if they gave it directly to the town or not. I don't think the land trust was in the business of yeah. easements at that I don't, I, I've I, never heard the land trust. I know trust. it because the Maple Corner, Maple Corner Community Center was, look, was looking for, well, we were looking for parking. Well, the community was looking for parking for, um, for a um, commuter lot and um, a park and ride. And where the bus could stop, and we checked out that area, and they, and I think it was the land trust that, that said, you know, you can't change that. Okay. So but that's where I got it from, well, from that, being I, part of the Maple Corner Community I, Center board. I'm not absolutely positive that was. I know. I know accurate. some restrictions were put on it, like you can't. Some of the words a little right. absurd. Like <laughs> you can't uh, cut a tree that's. Larger than oh, I was just reading that with the camp comfort. Yeah. I was going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. But that's a the, the, that's a, a point that that Sam's yeah. making. That's fine. Right. But to, you got you all can invest investigate yeah. further. But also, Sam, uh, what I've said all along, you know, good luck. But the fishing access. I mean, it's a very very popular and uh, well traveled fishing. It's it's known as the best. I always get this wrong. Bigger, wider. Large mouth bass. Is it large mouth bass? Big mouth. Um, a lot, real lot of fishermen say it's the best in the country. There's a lot of uh, uh, you know paid guides that bring people out here because we have that live there. You know, talk to all of them, and uh, we do plan on talking to Fish and Game. I doubt that we'll get any money from yeah. them, but they do. They make money from us, and so we'll ask. We are beating these bushes. I can answer part of your question about um, about who owns the about the land or even the land trust. When I was on the swim committee back around 2000, when we built the granite wall, I had to get permits from everybody you can imagine. I had to talk to the select board, I had to go to the state, I had to get water permits, and the land trust was involved in that. If um, swim lessons stopped being held, then the ownership I thought reverted back to the land trust. Um, and I don't know that it had any stipulation. I don't know whether it did have a stipulation or not about being a public swimming area. I can't answer that. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to keep swim lessons going because I think it's a great resource for kids. Mm -hmm. Linda? I was just going to add, it's not just local, Paul. I mean, you go there and you see that there's people from all over. I mean, the weekend especially. I mean, that pond is, is used. And when COVID came, we were, we were thinking, well, I think I was working with Denise at that time about putting up signs and in the select board and, and should it just be callous. But, you know, it was such a gift to everyone. <coughs> it's not just Maple Corner who goes to the pond. It's many, many, many people, just like Number 10 Pond has a lot. But I think Curtis gets more. I don't know. It's, I just wanted to say it's not as local as it seemed. <coughs> Other questions or comments, Mac? No, Mac, or the question again. Uh, the ARPA funds, are they, do they have a timeline when they have to be spent by? Is there a deadline on the ARPA funds? Yes, they have to be spent by um, sometime in 2024. I can't, I don't, I can't give you the exact date, but. It's completely spent or the project has to be started? Do you know the details? Um, you can say no if you don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know for sure. I think it would have to be spent because you have to go into the system and put in what the funds were used for to come up with your total funds that we received from ARPA. Any other questions or comments, folks? Um, just to reiterate, I guess everyone in the room has heard this, but 
the, when we evaluate the loss in, in uh, grand list value that would happen for uh, lack of a dam, um, there's easily, it's, the grand list value would be lost forever. The dam bond is 20 years. It's easily, even in that 20 year period, it would be more expensive for people in East Gallus and for Ad in Adamant in increase in property taxes due to the grand list value. Every single house on the pond would be almost worthless, but the pond, but my house across the street from the pond and anyone within a half a mile of the pond, their property value would, would drop. Uh, additionally, as a member of the Maple Corner Community Store Board, um, you know, we have 200 shareholders, you know, not, not just in Maple Corner, who own the, the, the store. The store does not have flood insurance for two reasons. One is we can't afford it. Um, the other is if the dam breaks, uh, the store wouldn't have enough revenue to survive. We just, we just, and so that would be a loss for all 200 shareholders. Um, also, if you look at real estate ads, anywhere near, you know, Kent's Quarter, et cetera, um, they often, or almost always, as far as I can tell, uh, state that they're within walking distance or a couple minutes drive of the Maple Corner Community Store and Whammy Bar. That's actually a property value increase, too. So with the loss of the store, there would be further grand list loss, I, I assume, and I think that, I think any real estate agent would tell you that. Um, so I just want to make sure that everyone realizes it's actually going to cost every taxpayer, including Paul, um, more money. John, we've already established nobody wants the data yeah. disappear. So. So, 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 it's going to, so that's why it's actually important for people who are not in Maple Corner to support it, because they're actually going to pay more money in taxes if the state comes and lowers it, or if another Irene comes through. The dam still is too narrow. It's already listing, and and um, and the dam is the poster child of our state auditor's report, which is pushing the state to take action um, and 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 accusing them of failing to take action on these dams that are that are marked as failed with uh, poor grades. Um, so this the state is under a lot of pressure to um, right now, and that pressure could indicate that they'll come at some point soon and pull the thing down. And they don't have to have permits, they just do it. I just want to be cognizant of time, folks. It's 10 of. Any other comments from the floor or questions? Cindy? Cindy Gardner Morris. I have a question. When Adam had flooded out and lost the road, did the dam go out there? And who paid for that? Did you the dam part of it. That was a private. That was a privately owned dam. And as far as fixing the roads, the town fixed the roads. I don't recall if we got reimbursed for that. John, do you remember? The uh, first off, the dam was not damaged. It, uh, the dam was circumvented. It went down the side. That's right. And it created its own spillway. Okay. All right. Um, and I don't know if we got grant money for the town. I don't think. I don't think. Back shape yeah, I don't roads. think we did. I think we just fixed the roads. Oh, not the long time. Oh, ten years maybe. I was going to say twelve. Yeah, ten or twelve years. Not very long. I know Conrad Smith was with us because he was out there with me. So. Yeah. And is it owned by the music school in in Sukumil? Yeah, Sukumil. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A little silence, anyone? Other thoughts? All right, I think we can call this a wrap if that is, uh, and I don't know if I, should I be calling for a motion yep. to? Yeah, motion, motion to adjourn. Yep. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Second. David Hemel. And so we're adjourned. Thanks every, oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming out. I just want to thank you all. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, welcome to the party. It is 6.15.